So Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see about that that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Had I the chance I wouldn't fail to clap young Goldilocks in jail. Now just imagine how you'd feel if you had cooked a lovely meal, delicious porridge steaming hot, fresh coffee in the coffee pot. With maybe toast and marmalade, the table beautifully laid, one place for you and one for dad, another for your little lad, then dad cries, golly gosh, gee whiz, oh cripes, how hot this porridge is. Let's take a walk down the street until it's cool enough to eat, he adds. An early morning stroll is good for people on the whole. It makes your appetite improve. It also helps your bowels to move. No proper wife would dare to question such a sensible suggestion. Above all, not at breakfast time, when mel men are seldom at their prime, no sooner are you down the road than Goldilocks, that little toad, that noisy, thieving little louse, comes sneaking in to your empty house. She looks around, she quickly notes, three bowls brimming full of porridge oats. And while still standing on her feet, she grabs a spoon and starts to eat. I say again, how would you feel if you had made this lovely meal? And some delinquent little tot broke in and gobbled up the lot. But wait, that's the, not the worst of it. Now comes the most distressing bit. You are, of course, a house proud wife and all your happily happy married life. You have collected lovely things like gilded cherubs wearing wings and furniture by Chippendale bought at some famous auction sale. But your most special value treasure, the piece that gives you endless pleasure, is one small children's dining chair, Elizabethan, very rare. It is in fact your joy and pride passed down to you on grandma's side. But Goldilocks, like many freaks, does not appreciate antiques. She doesn't care, she doesn't mind, and now she plonks her fat behind upon this dainty precious chair and crunch it busts beyond repair. A nice girl would at once exclaim, oh dear, oh heavens, what a shame. Not Goldie, she begins to swear, she bellows, what a lousy chair, and uses one disgusting word that luckily you will never have heard. I dare not write it, even hint it. Nobody would even print it. You'd think by now this little skunk would have the sense to do a bunk, but no, I very much regret. She hasn't nearly finished yet, deciding she would like a rest. She says, let's go and see which bed is best. Upstairs she goes and tries all three. And here comes the next catastrophe. Most educated people choose to rid themselves of socks and shoes before they clamber into bed, but Goldie didn't give a shred. Her filthy shoes were thick with grime and mud and mush and slush and slime were still upon the heel of one was something that a dog had done. I say once more, what would you think if all this horrid dirt and stink was smeared upon your eider down by this revolting little clown? The famous story has no clues. The girl, to show the girl removed her shoes. Oh, what a tale of crime on crime. Let's check it for a second time. Crime one, the prosecution's case. She breaks and enters someone's place. Crime two, the prosecutor notes she steals a bowl of porridge oats. Crime three, she breaks a precious chair belonging to the baby bear. Crime four, she smears each spoonless sheet with filthy messes from her feet. A judge would say without a blink, 10 years hard labour in the clink. But in the book, as you will see, the little beast gets off scot-free. While tiny children near and far shout, goody, goody, hooray, hurrah. 
Poor darling Goldilocks, they say. Thank goodness that she's gone away. Myself, I think I'd rather send young Goldie to a sticky end. Oh, Daddy, cried the baby bear, my porridge gone. It isn't fair. Then go upstairs, the big bear said. Your porridge is upon the bed. But as it is inside Mademoiselle, you will have to eat her up as well. And all you can see are Goldilocks's shoes.